Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have 20 of my best neutral fall Dollar Tree DIY ideas for you if you love decorating for fall but you don't want all of that color. Let's get started. The first DIY, we're going to use one of these little summer sun hats from the Dollar Tree and just a wood pumpkin. It doesn't have to be a plain one like this. It can be any um, wood pumpkin from Dollar Tree because we're going to cover it with that great material that the sun hat's made out of. And this turned out so cool. Now, I know that um, on these sun hats, if you like start unwinding the seam, you can get it into strips. But I'm going to kind of take a different approach on this one. I am going to try to leave a lot of it intact and kind of use like that curved brim of the hat to make my little sections of the pumpkin. So I just went in and like cut the top part off of the hat. And so now I have these great like arched pieces like that that I thought I could use to start putting this together. So I just put some hot glue on this side. I try to line up the arch with the side of my pumpkin and then I just trim it down and secure it with hot glue. It's a nice thick material so you can use hot glue on this no problem and that should be strong enough to keep it on there. And then I just go around and trim that up close to the side of the pumpkin to give me that great pumpkin shape. And we're gonna cover the entire pumpkin kind of using that strategy. So that was like that section of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. Just kind of lining the arch up there with it and doing that whole section up into the little section like there at the bottom where it kind of goes in a little bit, goes almost all the way there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the material here in the middle too. It's gonna to give us this really cool, like almost like a seagrass, a faux seagrass effect on the pumpkin. And it looks so great, especially for like neutral decor. I was trying to like, you know, kind of line this up how that would like kind of arch a little bit. It's not near as arched as the sides of it, but we're gonna kind of piece it together um, little by little. And so I just hot glue a strip of it right here and then I can kind of trim it into that like arched shape for like a little um, pumpkin section to kind of keep that same pattern going that we had on the sides. I'm gonna use another strip there from the side of the hat to do the same thing. And you could, you know, separate this into the individual pieces and kind of put it together piece by piece, but I think it was a little bit easier kind of keeping them connected like this. And right now it looks a little like crazy, but we're going to, um, we're going to make this look better. So I went ahead and cut individual strips to kind of do the middle section here because I saved the very top of the hat to kind of cut in like an oval shape for that section of the pumpkin. And it'll have that nice like round center. So I go ahead and hot glue that right in the center, which makes sense, right? And then using my strips, I can kind of frame that out, clean it up, make it look a little bit better. And they kind of look like the little sections of a pumpkin, just hot gluing that all down. Now, one advantage of cutting the strips is you don't get like the little plastic strings as much, but I think those might not be so bad if you pull them out before you kind of put something together. But I just use some twine to go over the little pumpkin stem. This is some thicker twine and I just hot glued it and just ran it up on the pumpkin stem. You know, rope or twine always makes a great pumpkin stem for these. And I'm going to kind of just make it the same length that it was before. So that looks good. And I really kind of like the vibe of this. Um, definitely the little, the little section pieces really helped kind of give it that pumpkin vibe. But it was a really cool texture. So I wanted to make like a sign to go behind it. So I wanted it to be kind of heavy duty too. So I'm gonna use two of the wood plank boards from Dollar Tree. You could also use like the uh, wood shelf signs. I like to put those together to make um, signs as well. These are cut pretty square. Sometimes you need to sand the ends of them because they're a little rough, but usually they have one side that's got a really nice smooth surface that's great for making signs. The other side is usually a little bit rougher I have found. 
So I'm just going to go around with my sanding block, kind of clean it up a little bit, and then we can just attach the two pieces together. It's so thick and kind of square that you can just use hot glue and glue the two pieces together to get a larger sign. And it's a great source of wood. You could always stain it if you wanted to. I kind of want like a driftwood feel to mine. So I'm going to start with some ivory acrylic, kind of do a base coat of ivory acrylic all over. And then once I get that on there and dry, I'm going to go back with some antique wax by Waverly and kind of do a um, wood, like a little bit of a wood grain just by distressing in one direction like this. Just kind of all over and then kind of blend it with a baby wipe kind of make it a little bit softer and it's going to give me kind of a really cool like kind of driftwood finish now i have some extra like little sawtooth hangers i always save those off of the canvases that i diy from dollar tree so i'm just going to use that to hang this sign so i love these because they don't have any of the little tiny nails um you can just use your hammer and hammer them right in and I think that looks good. So let's go ahead and attach our little like faux seagrass pumpkin. I kind of wanted it to have to sit up a little bit just because the stem was wrapped in rope. So I didn't think it was going to sit too level. So I'm just going to use a couple of wood dominoes from Dollar Tree just to make a base there. You could use anything like a Jenga block or something like that. And then I hot glue this to the back side using the twine wrapped stem and the area where we added the little wood dominoes. Now, at first I was going to add this little galvanized metal leaf on there, but I decided that a word would look way better. So these are the little metal fall words they have every year at Dollar Tree. And it is the perfect size for this pumpkin. So just have to decide what I want mine to say. And I think I like the word welcome on there. I'm just going to leave it galvanized metal like that. I think it looks really good with like the ivory and the wood colors on that. So it's just a matter of attaching that. I'm just going to do some hot glue here in a few places, trying to make it not so obvious. I don't want glue coming out everywhere. So just a couple places to tack that down. And then I think every pumpkin needs some little pumpkin tendrils. So I use some wire jute from the Dollar Tree. Just wrap it around something the shape of a pen. Make a little pumpkin tendril to add to our pumpkin stem up here. I've got a little room behind the pumpkin so I can kind of glue it right underneath. And cut off any wire that might be sticking out. Then for a pumpkin leaf, I thought it would be really cute to use some of these fall leaves from Dollar Tree. These are kind of the ivory ones. So again, very neutral. And I thought maybe um, they are a little bit different. So I chose like a large one and then like a small one. Maybe we'll have like two little pumpkin leaves up here. And again, I have that kind of space there. So I can just put some hot glue on the little leaf stem and glue that into place. It's going to kind of fill up that empty spot of our little fall sign. And it's going to provide a little bit more decor. I'm going to layer the smaller one right on top. And just securing that all down with some hot glue. And I really love how this turned out. I think it's so pretty. It's got a very like classy feel to it. And again, if you don't like a lot of color in your fall, I know a lot of you guys like to decorate like neutrals for fall. This would be great for that. And here it is. This is how it looks hanging in my home. This has been one of my most popular fall DIYs I think I've ever done here on my channel. Um, really popular. I would love to see it if you create it for your home. And it was really fun. I love crafting with those hats and the bags that are kind of like that from Dollar Tree. They also have them in colors now. Hey guys, if you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. It always helps my videos do better here on YouTube. Okay, let's do another neutral fall DIY. I'm going to use this little wood round from the Dollar Tree. It does have a word on the other side of it, which I don't really need, but that's okay because I can always just make that the back of my sign. And I thought I could combine that with one of the wood bead reforms from the Dollar Tree. I love those things. And a Dollar Tree burlap leaf and see if we can kind of make a larger version of that. So I want to leave the wood bead garland or the wreath 
um, the natural color. So for the wood round, I'm actually going to stain it. And I'm going to do the same kind of technique where I just do a thin coat of antique wax by Waverly on the sign and then wipe it off with a baby wipe while it's still wet. And it's going to give us a beautiful, like kind of medium warm stain on here. Definitely going to go with our neutral colors. This DIY was so easy to make because I'm going to use one of the little burlap maple leaves like this from the Dollar Tree. I chose one of them. The, the maple leaves are really kind of large, but I think it's going to work well with this. And I kind of liked the tan burlap color. So I'm actually going to leave the little wire on there to make it look like a um, leaf stem here. I just kind of bend it to one side just to give it a little bit of character and we can attach that to our wood round. And I think like the burlap, the stained wood, and then the unfinished wood on the wood beads is all going to go really well together for neutral colors. I just glued the wire down because I want the rest of the burlap leaf to kind of stick up a little bit on the sides, kind of adding a little bit more dimension to the whole project kind of fold them up like that. And there was a little glue already on the wire there. So I'm just gonna kind of clean that up to kind of make that look more like a leaf stem, less like a wire. And I'm glad I left that on there because I think it looks cool. Now I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree twine and I'm gonna make a hanger for the wood round to attach it to the wood bead wreath, but I'm also gonna make it also a hanger. So I just cut down some twine. I burned off the fuzzies in advance and I threaded that through. Now I'm gonna have it connect here where the reef form connects. So I actually just string that through and I made sure that it was long enough that I could have a hanger on it too. It's a little tricky just trying to get it through, but it's basically just gonna double knot it. So I knot it once or double knot it here. Make sure that it's gonna hang exactly where I want it to in my wreath form. And then I can take that same twine and knot it again just to make a little wreath hanger. Now I'm going to use this on my wall, but you can always use this for a wreath for your door as well. The colors are beautifully and neutral and this would go with any kind of color scheme. And this is how it turned out. I told you this one was going to be really easy. And I'm a big fan of those wood bead wreaths like that from the Dollar Tree. Having them pre-made like that and for $1.25, I think it is a really good bargain. And I always love the burlap leaves from the Dollar Tree. I think they're so cute and um, really easy to craft with. Now I have a foam pumpkin from the Dollar Tree and I thought it would be really fun to do a raffia pumpkin. I don't think I've ever done a raffia pumpkin. So to do that, I'm going to use a Dollar Tree grass skirt. So I just took four of the pieces that were knotted on the twine on the top of the skirt and pulled those off and we're gonna do four at a time. So I just pull off the stem on the foam pumpkin. If you can find the white foam pumpkin at the Dollar Tree, it's gonna make your life easier. Otherwise you might need to paint it because you might be able to see it through a little bit um, when you're done wrapping it with raffia. But I just tucked my um, knotted ends inside, pulled it around, Cut it down a little bit just because it was a little long. I don't want to fill up the entire inside of the pumpkin with extra. And tucked that in. And I am just going to repeat that process till we cover the entire pumpkin. So I did four again. I just popped the knots inside the pumpkin hole there, wrapping it around, trying to keep it as tight up against the pumpkin as I can. Trimming off, you know, about six inches or so and tucking that down inside. So you can kind of see how much coverage. I think that maybe we could get away with like six or eight more rounds of that. So I just keep repeating the same process. I pull off four, that's about as much as I can really work with at a time. And step it inside, wrap it around and trim it before I put the end in. Now, I think this is probably the easiest foam pumpkin that I've ever DIY'd from Dollar Tree. Um, it was way simpler than I thought it would be. And probably the trick of using the grass skirt kind of helps with that. 
Now check your Dollar Tree if you don't have any grass skirts at home or raffia because they might still have some of these. Some of my Dollar Trees like move the summer stuff to like a back end stand or like the party section. I usually can find these year round on here. And so I just keep wrapping. I'm not really paying attention to a pattern at this point. I just want to cover it until I don't see any more of the white foam through it. And it was starting to get a little full inside there too. I could still see a tiny bit of foam. So I'm going to do another round here, shoving that inside. And then we will replace the pumpkin stem with something else. I thought one of these little wood slices from the Dollar Tree, these are the ones that kind of look like stems, um, would be perfect. And so it's really easy. All you got to do is push it in the hole that you created, that you put all the raffi in until you have a little pumpkin stem. Now, I think it's really cute. I love the neutral color, but I thought maybe we should dress it up a little bit, but nothing too crazy. I wanted to do like a pumpkin leaf. So this is a little green leaf from the package of multicolored leaves at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to use that nice and neutral with some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. And I just take some of that and kind of like just kind of tie it around. I'm not going to really like hot glue that on. I kind of want that to look imperfect, kind of like a vine, if you will. And I'm not going to do any tendrils or anything like that. I'm going to kind of get that look from this. And I think this really added a nice like natural element to it to combine with the raffia. But I don't want it to be too crazy. So I do trim it up a little bit, arranging it. And then to finish off this DIY, we're going to add just a little green leaf here, trying to find the perfect spot for it and just hot gluing that on. And we have a neutral raffia pumpkin, perfect for fall decor. And one thing I love about fall decor, I decorate for fall now, like I'm decorated now for fall. Um, but I try to, I have to take a lot of it down to get make room for all of my Halloween decor. But then I put my fall back up for Thanksgiving because I don't like to skip Thanksgiving. So this is how it turned out. I think this is really pretty. You know, the foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree are not too large. So this would pretty much fit anywhere. And it would also be good for a tear tray as well, I think, for fall. And I love it when I can use those grass skirts from the Dollar Tree. I think they make great raffia for fall. I'm going to use this little oval wood plaque that I got at Dollar Tree. And I also have another little Dollar Tree sign there that I'm actually going to use just to make a base for this because I wanted to make it a standing sign. And I didn't really have a little block of wood like just the right size. So I just took that to my saw and just cut it down so we would have a base for this DIY. Now I want to transform this little wood amp this little wood sign into an acorn. So for the um, nut part of the acorn, I wanted to make this look burlap. I thought that'd be really cool. And then I have a really fun idea for the acorn cap. So you could always use burlap from the Dollar Tree. I just happen to have a burlap roll sitting here from Walmart. This is like the six inch roll, so I'm just gonna use it. And I start by gluing it to the bottom. It's about the perfect size I need it to be. And then I want to wrap it around. I want to cover the back too, um, just because I'm going to have a standing sign. So I want the back to look a little bit finished. So I'm just using hot glue to try to pull it tight around that oval shape. And that's going to be the bottom part of the acorn. So I just trim off any excess burlap back there and glue that side tight. On this one, I'm going to kind of like overlap, you know, to kind of cover up the back of it because pretty much the acorn is going to be all finished. So I'm just going to hot glue that to itself there in the back and then just trim off the excess burlap. Now, I wanted to do an acorn cap on this and I wanted it to kind of stick out from the acorn like an actual acorn would be. So what I was going to use to put on there, I don't really have anything to glue it to and I really need some more depth to this. So to start with, I'm going to use some Dollar Tree rope and we are going to wrap that around the acorn cap. 
And it kind of looks cool like that, but we're actually going to add more to it. So this is just going to bump it out a little bit and make it look like the acorn cap and um, give me something to glue the acorn cap to. So I just started in the back and we're just hot gluing this around. I think, I'm not sure which one. I think this is the smaller diameter um, Dollar Tree rope. I've been finding that a lot more in my stores. It's kind of hit or miss with the Dollar Tree rope. Um, they either have a ton of one kind or another. <laughs> so I'm just hot gluing it. I do hot glue it tight to the front and the back and I'm just wrapping it all the way around. That way all the sides are finished, including the sides. Now you could probably do this with the oval wood sign at Dollar Tree that's completely flat. But you're going to get a lot more dimension if you do it with one of their little thicker plaques like this. So once I get to the top part, I'm just going to go smaller and smaller until I fill in the remaining part of the acorn cap. And my plan to do that is to use pine cones. So I wanted to use the little scales from the pine cone to make a really cool acorn cap. Now I've never taken apart a pine cone before, so it seemed difficult. So I tried a knife, but you know, that really didn't do anything. You really have to just pull all the pieces out. Um, I'm using a couple of um, pine cones that I just got at Dollar Tree. I don't know, maybe it's easier if you find them outside. <laughs> but it was a little challenging. So I just pulled out as many of the pieces as I could get, trying to pull out the little scales and get them in one piece. And it's gonna take more than you think um, always with this, but I thought like the first row here of the little acorn cap, we could use the little pine cone scales, kind of like this to kind of give us that scalloped border. And then for the rest of the acorn cap, I'm going to turn the little pine cone scales around to kind of show all the cool colors and design on the other side. So you can do about half of it at a time with your hot glue pretty much still staying wet. And I'm just going to hot glue those on that last rope overlapping the burlap slightly. This DIY turned out so cool. At first I was like, oh man, this sounds like a lot of work, but I'm so glad I, that I did it because it is absolutely beautiful. So definitely going to need tons more of the pine cone scales. So I started pulling apart a second one and I was able to do the whole thing with two and these pine cones aren't very big. Now, speaking of Dollar Tree pine cones, though, I got a really big one there the other day. That's like maybe like six inches or something like that. And um, I'm definitely going to save that maybe for Christmas. I think it would be a really fun like Christmas tree DIY because it kind of shaped like a Christmas tree. I thought about using that one, but I wanted to save it. So I pulled out as many as I can easily get to here. And this is what I mean by having the other ones go the opposite direction like this. See how they're kind of like really dark and they have that really cool pattern on it. So I want that to be visible. I think that's gonna make it look kind of like an acorn cap. And so I am just gonna start hot gluing those on, slightly overlapping the row below it. You can kind of nest them in between the individual ones, but since all of mine were kind of different sizes, um, I kind of did that if I could, but otherwise I didn't, it doesn't really matter. And I want to cover up basically all of the brown rope until we get the entire thing covered with the little pine cone scales. So that's what it looks like so far. See how different they are when you flip them over? I like all the different colors and brown on these. I'm going this direction. And I think normally when you pull um, the pine cone scales out, they kind of have a spike on them. But mine kind of broke off is how I could get them out. So mine didn't really have that problem. And I'm in Florida, so um, I kind of have to go somewhere if I'm going to find a pine cone. I mean, I guess I could find somewhere so some somewhere in town, but not in my yard or anything like that. So I usually buy them and I'm going to need a stick here in a minute too. And I have no sticks in my yard because I only have palm trees. And so I'll show you what I end up doing for that part. 
So I just keep going one row at a time, hot gluing those in place. And as you can see, I am slightly wrapping that around both sides so that it looks really good and finished. If it was going to be in a place where you could really see all the sides, you might want to wrap it all the way around. Now, this is a nice small DIY, too. I think this would be a really good DIY for like a tear tray for fall. I haven't decided where I'm going to put mine yet, but I really love how it turned out. Now, I got that far and I was like, I think I need more pine cone scales. So I was able to get a few more off those two. And they're a little bit smaller, but that's okay because I'm just filling up this top part. And I just continue with the rows until it is completely finished. Now, I told you I needed a stick for this. And the reason why is I need like a little stick um, coming out the top of the acorn. And again, I didn't really have anything, but I did have some um, ball greenery that had these little plastic stick pieces on it. So you know what? We're going to make do with that. So basically, I just want a little tiny stick like an acorn would have just coming right out the top. Not too big, though. And I'm just going to attach that with hot glue. Now, I want to display this wonderful acorn on a um, base. So that's why I cut down that other sign before. It's just a matter of attaching it. Now, I was thinking hot glue might not be strong enough all by itself. So I thought maybe if I took a nail, I could go through the bottom and give me a little bit more to anchor with. So I'm going to use some Dollar Tree nails here. And I'm going to put some wood down because I want to protect my silicone mat here. And I'm just going to hammer this nail right in the bottom. I am going to off center it a little bit, though, because the acorn, I kind of want to sit it at an angle. So that would make more sense. So I am just going to hammer that in the bottom and it's going to be sticking up. And hopefully, you know, the wood would be soft enough just to kind of lay that on there. And it actually worked out better than I could imagine. So that looks good. I have to decide exactly how I want this. I want mine tilted slightly to the left. So I just kind of pushed it on there. And the wood was soft enough. It accepted the nail really well. Then I can hot glue under it as well. So the hot glue and the nail in combination. And then I wasn't... So sure, it was going to be strong. So I did add um, some more hot glue here a couple times to make sure that this is going to be nice and strong. It's not super heavy, so I'm not real worried about it falling over or anything like that. But I think the nail was definitely the trick if you're going to have yours be standing like this. Just giving it a quick trim here to clean up the back and maybe a little bit more hot glue. And this DIY is complete. I think it turned out so cool. Look at all those fun pine cone scales on the top of that acorn. I think this is my favorite acorn DIY that I've ever done. The colors are all super neutral. And I think this would look great with any fall decor. So this is how it turned out. The scales of that pine cone are beautiful, aren't they? Who knew? It's my first time ever taking one of those apart. I don't think I've ever taken a pine cone apart before. But I think it turned out really cool. What do you guys think? Okay, next DIY, I picked up this little pumpkin sign at the Dollar Tree the other day. It does have a little bump out autumn word. Unfortunately, it's like really just cardboard. So I don't think there's much um, luck on saving it. I'm just going to pop it off with heat and a putty knife. I just wanted this reform. It was just the right size for me. I don't really care about the image or anything that's on there because I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to see what it would look like if I covered one of these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree with some of their new macrame cord. You guys know I love this. I've been crafting with this stuff all the time. And I thought maybe we could kind of get like the sweater look vibe on the front of this with the um, macrame cord and so that's what we're going to try to do now this pump pumpkin has like three sections so we're going to do like kind of one section at a time i just start by hot gluing along the top of the pumpkin and then going around the outline of the pumpkin 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up doing like three ovals, which is going to cover the whole pumpkin. So I'm going to just get started with the left side. I put down like a whole bunch of hot glue to try to speed me up. But honestly, I don't know if that really speeded me up or not. But you do kind of have to hot glue um, here and there to make sure it is going to be stuck to it. But I'm just going to repeat that same spiral pattern all the way on this section of the pumpkin until we fill the whole thing up. I've done something similar with um, the Dollar Tree like white nautical rope like unwoven with other DIYs and so I thought we could try to do this for a pumpkin and I really love how this turned out. Now it is a lot of hot gluing so be careful and don't burn yourself. And now I'm just going to start doing it here on the other side. They have some really cute fall decor items this year, even though my Dollar Tree by my house still doesn't have theirs out. They have like a little bit of Halloween, but all of it is still sitting in the boxes. I was about ready to pitch in and help them um, stock the shelves today just so I could see what they have. <laughs> But some of the stuff is really cute. Some of the stuff like this one, I kind of wanted to remake. So now this middle section, I do want to go ahead and fill it in just so I have a flat surface to work with when I do my middle oval. So I just kind of had to get creative, almost doing like triangle shapes here at the top and the bottom just to fill that all in. And then we can start with our third oval. I wanted this to be 3D and I want this to be kind of overlapping the two ovals on the side. So I just start with a long piece in the middle and then I'm starting from the inside outside on this one, hot gluing around until I go from the top to the bottom of the pumpkin. And you can already tell kind of how cool this looks. It is a little time consuming with um, the hot gluing, but really it's kind of a mindless crafting. You can get it done pretty easily. I think that looks pretty good. And then to finish it off, I thought we could use one of these like little leather tags. They did bring these back again this year for fall at Dollar Tree and I love them. I thought we could do like the little harvest tag here. It's like a brown leather. It has a little strap. So we can kind of take advantage of that by actually just using that strap and using that to tie that right around the pumpkin. I think it totally goes with that like sweater vibe that I was going for. I'm just going to tack mine down with a little hot glue just to make sure that it stays in place. And this DIY is complete. I originally was going to paint it that same like honey kind of color, but I loved it with just the my, white my, macrame cord. And so I think I'll leave it just like that. I think it looks really cozy for fall. You could also try this with, you know, some of their colored macrame cord they have now, but I really like like the wood stem, the brown leather combined with the white rope. Definitely more of a neutral color scheme for fall but I think it looks so cozy and fun. Kind of reminds me of a fall sweater. Okay, next DIY. I want to DIY one of these vases from the Dollar Tree. One of my favorite things to, to DIY. And then I have some pampas grass from the Dollar Tree and some fall pampas grass. It's a little bit shorter, but it's got that beautiful like honey color. Now, I thought we could use one of these little sun hats from the Dollar Tree to kind of make like a seagrass, like a braided seagrass look on that Dollar Tree vase. Let me show you how easy this is to do. Now, I've always cut this stuff in the past, but I found that if you just get it started with the thread, it just peels right off. It's like a plastic thread that they use to keep this together. Look at this. You just pull and it comes apart. Now it's not super clean. Some of the plastic thread does like to stick out, but I think that's pretty cool. I used pretty much just the brim of the hat. I think that's going to be enough to color cover the Dollar Tree vase. And it's a great way to take a cheap $1.25 vase like this and make it look really high end. So to attach it, I'm just using hot glue. Um, right there to get me started and I'll use some hot glue along the bottom just to make sure that I keep like this bottom row 
exactly where it should be and I go all the way around. Now I don't want to cut and start again. I do want to just keep wrapping it. So then I just slightly go up and I'm just overlapping uh, like the seagrass, like right below it slightly. And I'm just kind of wrapping with pressure, but then just hot gluing every, he you know, here and there, um, just to make sure it's going to stay tight and not come unwound. But I couldn't believe how easy it was to take this stuff apart. I'm going to have to remember that. I use the purses a lot to decorate with because it gives you a cheap like Dollar Tree version. But you get kind of like that seagrass look. With this pattern, it's like really looks woven. It looks really cool. So I go all the way to the top, just hot gluing it to itself. And we have a new vase. I think that color is going to go perfect with a fall theme. But like I said before, you can kind of see there, there's little plastic threads kind of sticking out all over from that. And so I don't know the best way to remove them. I did try giving it a quick trim with some scissors. I did even try a lighter, but it didn't really work too well. Um, I did notice if you grab them though, the ones that were kind of like really obvious, and kind of tug on them, you could kind of pull them out. And so that's what I kind of did. But in the end, um, they don't stick out very much. So I don't think it's going to be super obvious. But that might be the only downside of the way that I took it apart. But I think that looks pretty good. So let's fill this up with some Dollar Tree flowers. I wanted to combine this pampas with the regular pampas, both from the Dollar Tree. Um, I do kind of like the fact that they're different lengths, but I do like the other one a little bit better just because it seems like, um, the Pampas looks a little bit better than these fall color ones. They also had these in orange today at my Dollar Tree that I also picked up for Halloween. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all the tags off of these. Then we can arrange them in the vase. I thought like one of this color, which is the only one I have left. I've already DIY'd with this before. I made a pampas wreath in a previous video. And then two of like that honey color, kind of like on each side of the vase for a fun little floral arrangement. Now I got it all on there and I decided I needed to add some sand to my vase to make it easier to stand these up. And so I'm going to go ahead and put them back in there. That way I can arrange them a little bit. I just put some little bit of Dollar Tree sand in there. And I thought it still needed something. I love the colors, but I thought it needed something more that just kind of like screamed fall. And I remembered I had some Dollar Tree leaves, like a pick of leaves with very similar colors. And so I'm going to see how that looks adding it. I think maybe I've used a few leaves off this before. So I'm just kind of removing any empty stems that I can find just to clean that up. But I think there's still enough leaves left on here. And I'm so glad I added the leaves to the pampas grass because the combination of the two of them is absolutely beautiful. They just really work well together. Let me try to kind of show you. Can't really lean it too much. So let me show you how this looks um, in my home. It's so pretty. I love those colors. That honey color is really growing on me. And this is how it looks all together. I kind of did the pampas graphs off to one side, the fall leaves on the other side. And how cool does that vase look? I've done a lot of vase DIYs on my channel and I think this is one of my favorite and it's really versatile. You could use it for any season, not just for fall. And now up next, I am going to use one of these little gather signs from the Dollar Tree. You know, I love the fact that they're giving you the word like on the plain sign like this, but again, it does make it a little trickier to try to paint it. Now, I love the like um, ivory sign on the back. So I think that's fine because we're going neutral. So I thought we would just stain the raw wood gather with some antique wax by Waverly. And I'm just doing that with a makeup sponge, trying to not get like a significant amount of that on the sign underneath. But it's kind of inevitable that you're going to get some on there. And but that's OK. 
because I wanted to distress the ivory sign anyway. It goes with my coastal farmhouse vibe in my house. And so to do that, I just use a baby wipe and I just basically wiped all the antique wax that I accidentally got on the sign on it and just kind of evenly kind of blended that, dispersed it all over, made it look a little bit more rustic. And I, it is cool though for $1.25 that you can get that sign and it's already got the word gather on it. I guess that's like half the price than if you were going to put, you know, both the pieces together. So for the frame, I thought we could frame it out with some of the Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. I really love this zigzag pattern. I think it's really cool. And I think that's going to go great for the neutral color scheme for these DIYs. And it's going to add a lot of texture with a little bit of burlap. I love burlap. We're going to use that a lot today. And this is just one application of it. So I just hot glued one into the other, trimming off. And then I'll just fill in the open space here on the side of my frame with some more of the burlap ribbon. And I do want this to be a hanging sign like it was before. And I am kind of covering up the holes with this, but I'll show you how I go about fixing it. Um, I'm going to take some Dollar Tree twine to make the hanger. And I like to go in and knot it in the front anyway. I find the Dollar Tree signs lay better against your wall when you do it that way. So I knew I needed to go through the tiny hole in the sign and the frame and the burlap ribbon that we added to it. So I'm actually going to use a needle. I picked up these large upholstery needles actually at Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. And then I just thread it through from the back, tying it into the front and problem solved. I'm going to make it about the same length as it was before on the hanger. And basically that's all we're going to do with this sign. I love the neutral colors. I think it's really pretty. You could use this, you know, for fall. It's going to last you through Thanksgiving too. And it's going to go great if you have like a neutral color scheme for fall. So you can see the distressing on the back is kind of imperfect, but I kind of like that. Um, it definitely makes it look kind of old. Really neutral though, and a really easy fall sign. Now we're gonna make a fun pumpkin sign using some of these wall shelves from the Dollar Tree and some Dollar Tree rope. You guys know I love making um, signs out of these because you can add two or three of them together, make any size sign, and you have this great thick wood. It doesn't bow, it's actual wood, so you can stain it if you want to. Um, it's great, it's nice, usually pretty flat, and you can just glue it to each other to make a larger sign. Now I kind of want to make mine look like driftwood, so I'm gonna use a combination of Antique Wax by Waverly, and some ivory paint to give me that perfect shade of driftwood. And just go over this entire sign, staining it that color. And this is going to be kind of like more like of a neutral color um, coastal fall sign. I kind of want the wood grain to come through, so I wipe off any excess paint letting any wood grain sneak through. And I'm also gonna go ahead and paint the edges of the shelves too to kind of clean the sign up. And that gave me a great base coat. As you can still kind of see a little bit of that wood grain coming through, so that's good. But I'm gonna add to it with a little bit of Antique Wax by Waverly, distressing in one direction, giving that wood grain appearance, kind of breaking it up. Um, wood's never like one color. You want like multiple colors to give you that like fun wood grain. And that's what we're going for here. Just kind of alternating back and forth, giving it a little bit more color and then wiping off any excess with just a paper towel. I don't want to take too much of that stain off, but I want to give that great wood grain. Now, I told you they're super easy to attach to each other, and they are. Just a bead of hot glue down the side, and you can put the two together, and you're going to get a larger sign. Perfect for DIYing. Just cleaning any, up any excess hot glue, and I kind of showed you this wood pumpkin before. This is a wood pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. We're not going to use it. I'm just using it for a pumpkin shape, kind of using it as a stencil. And I'm just using like a white chalk pen, just, it could be anything. You want something white. Um, you're not going to be able to see it, but I want to kind of draw out the shape of a pumpkin. 
for my DIY onto the right onto the front of the sign. And this was perfect size pumpkin for that. And you could always freehand that, but if you have one of those, yeah, might as well use it as a stencil, right? And um, I got enough of that on there, I think, where I can kind of see the shape of the pumpkin. And we are going to create a rope pumpkin using this white rope from the Dollar Tree. And just shape it out like you would a pumpkin. Just going to go ahead and start my roll, removing the tape from the end. And we're going to attach this straight to our driftwood sign. Now, you can see the little segment, middle segment of the pumpkin there. And it has like an oval shape. So I'm going to go with that right there at the bottom. Gluing that middle down and just shaping that like that would be the middle section of the pumpkin with the Dollar Tree rope. And just gluing that on with hot glue, keeping that like arched shape. And I'm going to have it come together at the top, hot gluing the right side down as well. So easy to do this DIY and it turned out so cute. So I need like a C shape for the left side of our pumpkin. I'm going to glue like half at a time just to make sure that my hot glue doesn't set up and glue that straight over. And isn't this like such an easy way to make a pumpkin sign? I love it. If you wanted your pumpkin to be a different color, you could have went ahead and painted the background of the pumpkin and left the rest of the sign stained as well. That would give you a different look if you wanted yours to be a little bit more colorful. And just hot gluing down the right side to rope to rope. And you have a super easy little rope pumpkin. Since we did rope for everything else, I think we should use some Dollar Tree rope for the pumpkin stem. So I kind of glue a piece at the top. It's okay if it unwinds a little bit. I think that's going to look more like a pumpkin stem. And then cut out a length, however long you want your little pumpkin stem to be. And then I want to unwind this to make it look a little crazy. <laughs> so I have all three pieces and then I'm going to braid it together. I thought that would be a fun touch for the little pumpkin stem. Kind of a flat braid, just like you would braid your hair. And then I'm going to kind of attach it with hot glue over here on the side to kind of keep it in place. And I think that was a fun vibe. It looks way thicker than it did with just the rope. Just kind of trimming it up, making it not look so wild at the end. You want it to look a little wild, but not too wild. Just kind of hot gluing it to itself until it kind of has the shape that you want. And I think that looks a little bit more clean. Now for the middle of my pumpkin, I'm going to use one of those Dollar Tree starfish. You guys know I love them. I do want it to match though. So I'm going to use an ivory acrylic to paint that because... You know, that Dollar Tree white nautical rope has that tinge of like ivory. And I think that's going to look really good against the driftwood sign as well. So I'm just going to attach it with hot glue here. Now, the signs did have holes in them. Not too worried about that. I think it goes fine for like a coastal feel, but you might as well take advantage of it if you want to do a hanging sign, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to use the rope that came with the shelves. Um, it's just a thin white rope, and I'm just going to string that in from the back. Um, it's a little bit easier if you add a little hot glue on there. Let that dry and shape it. Um, gives you a harder surface, makes it easier to thread through there. I like to thread mine from the back, knot it on the front. I find that it hangs flatter against your wall that way. And so we're just going to do the same thing here on the other side to make a simple little hanger. And I know this does have a starfish on it because I like to decorate coastal. You could totally leave it off if you don't want that. But I thought I would include it in this video because it definitely fits the theme of the neutral color scheme for an easy fall Dollar Tree DIY. I think it's really cute. I mean, you could put other decor on it or you could just leave it just the plain outline of the pumpkin. I think that would be really cute as well. Okay, nothing says fall like a cozy candle, so we're going to make a really easy fall candle using a Dollar Tree candle and candle holder. 
Um, I thought we could use some of the faux leather from the Dollar Tree. I thought that would give us a fun, um, kind of like neutral color scheme for this, but we can make it look really fun. Now, the candle that I got is vanilla scented, so a scented candle for fall is perfect. I do need to figure out how big of a strap I need just to make a little sleeve for our candle holder. So I'm actually just going to use my candle holder itself kind of figure that out and then um, I'll just need a straight edge here I can kind of draw on the back of this faux leather and I don't craft with this stuff from the Dollar Tree very much but I've been crafting with it more lately I really love how easy it is to cut and it has a great texture on it so I probably should use it more often it comes in lots of different colors too I think I have navy brown black and this like ivory color now I thought this would be the perfect application for one of these little leather tags to decorate the candle. This one says harvest um, and I can attach that to the front of that. So just making sure that is going to be long enough, the little strap to go across and I'm just going to hot glue this down. Now the leather to the leather was a little hard with hot glue. I don't know, maybe I should have used a different kind of glue because I did have to glue that down several times. I also didn't really like the fact that the pumpkin stem had a hole in it from the little tag part. So um, I didn't glue that part down so I can kind of just snip that off. I kind of like it without one um, rather than to have a hole in it. And as you can see, it's staying down, but like the edges kind of kept wanting to lift up and I did have to glue them down a couple times, but in the end, I did get it to stay. And it kind of makes it worse that I'm kind of sloping it around that round surface, but it did work in the end. So I'm just gluing my ends down one more time, trying to make sure that they go all the way to the edges. And then we can just put this like little um, wrap around the candle holder. What an easy way to decorate a Dollar Tree candle. So I just put some hot glue down and hot glue the vinyl down, wrap it around. I think that those little tags are just the perfect size for a candle this size. I'm gonna trim that down and hot glue that to itself right there on the back. Now, as you can see, it did, the edges lifted up again. That's what I was talking about. I don't know if I should have used a different kind of glue but in the end, I used hot glue again. This time I held it down um, while it was bent and um, until it dried. And in the end, it did stay down, but it was challenging. It was fighting me there for a little bit. But I love the colors of that. I think that's gonna look perfect with a little ivory colored candle right inside. And I don't think it needs anything else. I was just making sure that my pumpkin was not gonna pop off again. And, um, you know, this should be fine to burn. Really nothing I think is going to be flammable. And so this is going to be a fun little candle for fall. So easy to put together and just pop the candle right inside. And there it is, our little harvest pumpkin candle for fall. Super cozy. And I love the colors together. Definitely more of like the neutral color scheme for fall. And I love a good fall candle. I've actually done a lot of fall DIYs here on my channel that are candles. Um, always so fun and the perfect ambience for fall. Okay, the next fall DIY, we're going to use these wood stems from the Dollar Tree. Um, I had seen that some people had made like cork pumpkins. And these are kind of shaped like corks, right? So I thought maybe we could do like a wood stem pumpkin and see if that looks nice and fun and coastal for fall. Now, as you can tell, there's lots of different shapes and sizes on these. I'm kind of picking out some of the shorter, wider ones. And um, I'm gonna have to try to form the shape of a pumpkin. Now it's kind of hard when some of them are larger and some of them are smaller. So what I'm gonna do is just do rows. And as long as I have like about the same size for the row, I think it's gonna work. I did like five for the middle and then I go up like four, three, and then down, you see I went four, three. I'm trying to kind of get like the general shape of a pumpkin. 
I think that's going to work. And now it's just a matter of attaching them to each other. So I'm going to use hot glue and just attach them side by side in those rows that I kind of laid out. So five for the middle row. And I'm hoping those will stay together. I'm adding a little extra hot glue to help reinforce those. And then I'm going to glue the next row. I went down to four in this row. So you can kind of fit them in the crevices between the two on top there. So I'm just adding hot glue to those. I'm also gluing the rows together. As much as I can glue them together, I think it's going to make it stay together a whole piece. And then I had three wood stems for my bottom row. Again, trying to glue everything to each other. A little extra hot glue on the back couldn't hurt, right? So now I'm going to do four on top of my five here, following the same kind of strategy. And I'm trying to glue it to at least multiple pieces of wood stems. And it's okay that this doesn't, not perfect at the top, but I am trying to find a piece that's going to fill it up a little bit better, which this one does, because I always have to do a pumpkin stem up there anyway. So I think that is good, but I thought it needed a little bit of extra support to stay together. I'm just going to use some burlap. This is a burlap roll that I had from Walmart, but you could totally use a Dollar Tree burlap as well. And I don't want it to be visible, but I do want it to be functional back there, that it's going to help glue all of those wood stems together and make sure it stays together. So I'm going to attach that to the back with hot glue. And that won't be distracting having the burlap behind it. If that peeks through, it's going to look nice and coastal and kind of go with the feel of it. But I think that's going to make it a lot sturdier than it was before. A little of heat gun action will clean up any hot glue that you have. And then I thought we'd use some of the decorative nautical rope from Dollar Tree. This is the nine and a half foot, the thinner one, to make a fun little pumpkin stem for this pumpkin. So I kind of have naturally have a place there where I can put a pumpkin stem. And we're going to try that same pumpkin stem technique where I take three of the Dollar Tree ropes and kind of make it look a little bit gnarly. I've seen some people do this with like um, paper bags as well. Um, that always looks really cool too. However you want to do your pumpkin stem, I think it's going to look cute. I like to use rope because I think it kind of goes with my coastal feel. But I just hot glued that into the gap. And then I'm going to kind of do the same strategy where I just take one. And then I wrap two together around it to kind of give it that weathered feel of a little stem. And I use hot glue on that to keep it together. Otherwise, it's just going to unwind. And you could totally build it before you put it in the pumpkin. I just thought it would be um, just as easy to do it while it was attached. Now I needed a pumpkin um, leaf, I thought, but I thought we would do like a fun coastal vibe to that by using some of this tropical foliage from the Dollar Tree, just like um, cutting off one leaf here for a little pumpkin leaf. It's kind of large. But I think we can make it work. I think it'll be fun. So I'm just going to kind of hot glue that to the top wood bead and kind of um, also glue down my stem to kind of make it go the direction that I want it to go and to stay in place. I did have a little bit of unwinding here. It was kind of a shorter stem than we did before. So I don't think it worked quite as well, but I think um, we made it work there. Now, of course, it needs a little pumpkin tendril. I'm going to use some of that wire tube from Dollar Tree again. Cut off a little piece, put that around something like the shape of a pen, pull that off, and you have a perfect little pumpkin tendril. I made mine a little long so that I could wrap that around the pumpkin stem. And then again, use that for a little bit of structure there to keep everything in place here for the pumpkin stem. And that's what I mean about like the wire kind of coming out of that. If you hot glue your ends, you're going to kind of avoid that stays together a little bit better because otherwise it just wants to fall off. I just don't want any wire protruding from the back of there. And I think we've got it to work. We have a little wood stem pumpkin. It's kind of cute, right? 
I wanted to give it a coastal feel, so I'm going to use a seashell that I had from Dollar Tree and just hot glue that up at the top of my pumpkin stem. And I think my camera died there for a second, but basically I used a blue paint pen to kind of put some little pumpkin stripes on there as well. Um, cause I didn't think it really looked like a pumpkin and maybe it doesn't, but it was still fun to make. This is how it turned out. My little wood stem pumpkin. And I couldn't decide if I liked it with or without the lines on there. But again, I did a coastal version of mine. You could add a more traditional leaf on there if you wanted to do just um, neutral fall with that. But it was really fun to put together and I really love this one. Now this next DIY, I'm going to use one of these little wood bead wreaths from the Dollar Tree. I think these are new this year. I've never seen them before in the fall aisle. And a couple of Dollar Tree signs. I picked up this one. I really loved the shape of it. I don't really need a hanger on it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the wood bead hanger that was on there. And I'm going to make it a standing sign by using that little round metal sign from the Dollar Tree. Now I do want to warm it up, give it a little bit more color. So even though it's already like a wood grain, I can still stain it, even though it's kind of probably finished a little bit, just by using some antique wax by Waverly. I just work in one direction. And I don't want a dark stain on this. So while my Antique Wax by Waverly is wet, I take a baby wipe and wipe off all the excess. And as you can see, it kind of lightens up the stain a little bit, but look at that beautiful wood grain. I want to leave the little wood bead wreath with the acorn inside this exactly how it is. I think it's perfect, but I wanted to add a little warmth with the wood. So this little sign from the Dollar Tree also has the same kind of base. So I'm going to stain it exactly the same way to make that coordinate. These come like in white or black and I craft with these all the time because they do great to make a, any kind of sign standing sign. So I don't really need the hanger on this. So I just trimmed that part off and I love the little burlap acorn and all of it. So I am just going to hot glue that down. I don't think I worked quick enough here because I put hot glue on, set it down. And I think the hot glue like kind of set up on me cause it was totally not sticking. So we'll try that again here, maybe with some a better job of hot gluing that on. Just try and remove any hot glue that's going to interfere with it. And let's try that one more time. Um, I got a replacement of this Ryobi hot glue gun, but now I'm having charging problems with it, which is a totally different problem than I was having with it before. So at this time, I still can't recommend that. <laughs> it's going to have to do better. So I think that looks great. I love all the different colors of brown, all the neutral colors. And then to get it a standing sign, I just hot glued the little metal rim ring like this to the back covering up that design and then making sure it is glued flat against the back of this sign. And it's not a very heavy sign, so I don't think it'll have any problems standing up on its own. So a really cute little DIY. If you wanted to make yours hanging, you could totally paint or stain the wood beads that were on that sign. But I really like the shape of that sign. I think it turned out really cute. And I really like it as a standing sign. I think it's really fun. So here it is. I finally found a reason to use one of these little wood bead um, wreaths from the Dollar Tree. And again, nice small project would be great on a tear tray, but I'm actually gonna use it for like cabinet fall decor. And I think they might have a few different variations of that little tiny wood bead garland this year. So you'll have to see what they have at your store. Hey guys, have you joined my private Facebook group yet? I always have it linked in the descriptions of my videos. I'd love to see what you've been creating. It's a great way for you to share your projects with me. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. My handle on everything is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, for the next DIY, I wanted to make a really kind of cool pumpkin shelf sitter. So we're going to use one of the little burlap. Um, pumpkin. I like those because they're on a stand. So I don't really need this little cardboard sunflower or this little raffia bow on here. So that's the first thing I'm going to deconstruct on this is just use my heat gun to kind of melt the glue on those to pull those off. And my vision for this is I wanted to cover it with that great like foil metal um, acorn stickers from the Dollar Tree. 
I decided to just go ahead and rip the entire burlap off, um, thinking that might help get rid of all that texture and then maybe the glitter, but the glitter was still kind of everywhere. So my first step here is just to kind of seal all the glitter down, kind of make it disappear here just by painting the pumpkin white. And that's just gonna give me a, you know, a plain background for if we add the stickers on there because that sticker is kind of like a mesh. So there is gonna be some openings and stuff on there. So you would be able to kind of see what's behind it. And then for the base, it's kind of a really dark wood. So I kind of wanted it to make it look a little bit more distressed. So I distressed that with ivory. And I guess it's called adhesive diamond wrap and it is like a peel and stick. So it's not quite white enough for a pumpkin, but I think it would be easy enough to piece this together to make this um, a really interesting texture for the front of the pumpkin. So I just kind of flip it over and use a Sharpie to kind of figure out exactly how big to make it. And I think it's gonna work better to kind of cut it beforehand Kind of requires a little bit of heavy duty scissors to cut through that, but just cutting down the sides and the top of the pumpkin until I have it just right. Then I can use the rest of the diamond mesh to kind of fill in the side parts that are missing. So I'm just gonna peel that, stick that down to our dry paint on our pumpkin, just making sure I get it lined up as straight as I can. And then I just want to kind of continue that same pattern here on the sides, just by kind of lining it up how it would look like that. So I decided it might be easier to kind of do it one strip at a time. That way I could trim it down. Um, and then I kind of had to do more than one with the acorns, so I could kind of leave those intact. But I just kind of cut it down until I got it to fit. You could just stick um, a piece on there like that and then just trim around the side. That might be a little bit easier too. And now we have like the entire surface of the pumpkin covered in the acorns. And then I wanted to paint it. I don't want to leave it that same um, kind of gold and brown color it was. So I'm going to distress the whole thing first with ivory. It's going to kind of you know, blend in with that white background that we did on this. And that's gonna kind of make all of that back texture, um, the ivory color. And then we can go back over all of the acorns and distress them and really kind of make them pop on that texture on the pumpkin. I found that if you used a brush, you could really get down in between all the nooks and crannies on that. And so then for the distressing, I just use Antique Wax by Waverly in a foam brush. And I just lightly drag it over and see how it pulls out all the acorns and all the little dots. And it gives you this really cool feel. I kind of follow that up with just a paper towel to kind of wipe off any excess and blend it in. And then I found this great little ornament from um, the Target dollar spot for a dollar that says Hello Pumpkin. And I thought that'd be really cute. We can kind of string that on the top here of our little pumpkin. It's already got a hanger and some wood beads on it. So might as well take advantage of that. And the Hello Pumpkin's kind of an orange, but it's not a real bright orange. So I think that is going to work well with the color schemes on this. I just attach it with a little hot glue on the back. And then I'm gonna use some of that wire jute again and ink pen to make a little pumpkin tendril for this one as well. And kind of attach it up here around the stem of the pumpkin. I decided just to hot glue it to the back. And then since, you know, we covered the little pumpkin in acorns, I thought it'd be really cute touch to add like an acorn to it too. And they have some of these little wood acorns from Dollar Tree and there are raw wood. So you do have to kind of paint it or stain it if you want a finish on it. I thought we could just kind of attach one just to the little pumpkin stem. And so I just stained the little acorn part with some antique wax by Waverly. Kind of want a rustic stain on that. Nothing too solid. Wipe that off with a paper towel. And then I just went ahead and actually just did the entire acorn. With that, it's kind of totally going to go. And I just don't wipe off the excess part too much. And then I also distress the bottom part with a little bit of ivory just to lighten it up a little bit, make it look a little bit different than the acorn cap. And I'm just going to attach it right up here at the top. 
um, just by hot gluing that onto our little diamond mesh. And this DIY was so um, easy to put together. I think it turned out really beautiful and high end looking. It looks way better than it looked from the Dollar Tree for sure. And this is how it turned out. I just love all that texture. Anytime I can use that like diamond mesh and I can paint it like that from the Dollar Tree, I always try to do it. But I think that antique wax by Waverly on the acorn background, it just really worked really well. Definitely the colors that it should be, but also the neutral color scheme that we're going for. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to try these little bamboo rings from the Dollar Tree and um, see if I could make a pumpkin shape out of these. Wasn't sure if this was going to work because they're super round, but I thought it would be fun to try. So I'm going to use three all the same size and I'm just going to kind of work one in between the other one and then work the third one in there too, kind of making this like spherical shape like that. <laughs> Maybe. And I thought we could try to make a pumpkin with open sides like that, but a round pumpkin, all 3D. So it's just a matter of trying to get it to stay together. So I was thinking it kind of needed something to keep it together, but something that I could still move the parts if I needed to, to even it out. So I decided a nail would probably be the best for that. So I just put down a piece of wood. I turned it upside down and I'm just going to nail some small, a small nail all the way through. Now, as you can see, that bamboo did not really like the nail. It did split. Um, and we're just going to work with it. <laughs> so the nails all the way through like that. And we'll hide it in the end. You won't be able to see it. But I think that the nail was an important part because it gave me like that little pivot point. But for the other end, since it since it cracked so badly, I'm going to go ahead and try to do it with hot glue instead. Now, since it's going to fall over like that, I thought we needed to do some kind of a base to make it stand up. And I needed something round. So I'm going to use one of these little wood reef um, charms from the Dollar Tree. I think it's going to be just about the right size. You could also use like the chunky one like that from the Dollar Tree if you wanted to. This one's a little bit flatter. And then we can sit it on there. It's going to kind of keep it in place and make sure it doesn't fall all over. It does say spring on there. So I am just going to go over that with some white acrylic paint that kind of disguise my words on there and we can keep building this little pumpkin out of wood rings they have some really interesting crafting supplies like that i think it looks really cute now since it's fall i thought we could do like a leaf base would be cute to decorate this with some leaves so these are like the ivory leaves from the fall section at the dollar tree and I'm just going to glue them on the wood base, kind of overlapping the edges like the pumpkin sitting in a pile of leaves. And that's why I didn't really care too much about painting that spring sign, just enough to disguise the words that were on there. I'm going to do four of the leaves, one pointing out each direction like that. And then one in the middle to cover that part as well. And we still have the wood shape under there to provide us that flat base that's going to make it stand up, but it's going to make it look way more decorative like this, I think. Now it's just a matter of attaching this to it. I'm going to go ahead and do a nail now. I didn't do a nail before to nail it into that base going to make it nice and strong but beware because it is going to split your wood if you do use a nail like that the bamboo was very hard harder than i thought but that worked it put it straight into the base it is going to stay put i think now now i thought we could add some of the brown nautical rope to kind of make this look even cuter add a more coastal feel and kind of um line the inside of the wood rings with the rope. So I just start by hot gluing that along the inside of the wood rings. 
And we're going to do that on all of them. So that way it's going to be like a mixture of like a wood and a rope pumpkin. It just added another element to it. And I think it's really fun. So I just hot glued it all the way to the tip here. Trimming that down to size, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here for the other two rings. This was kind of an experiment, but I do like how it turned out. It's very unique. Um, I was making this before they had any of the fall stuff out yet. So I was trying to think of anything like round or oval that I could make pumpkins out of. And so this came to me. <laughs> And on these pieces, I'm just cutting down each individual side because I don't want to layer too thick um, rope over rope where it comes together in the center parts of the pumpkin. Just cleaning up any excess hot glue I have. Trying to make that look a little bit cleaner. And then our pumpkin needs a pumpkin stem. I thought one of these wood stems from Dollar Tree would be perfect. I'm trying to find just the right shape and size. And I have that nail sticking up already, right? So I can just nail that nail down into the wood stem. It's gonna be super secure. It's just a matter of getting it on there, getting my hammer inside the pumpkin and nailing it on. Super fun. I wanted to do a pumpkin tendril, of course. I'm using some of that wire jute from the Dollar Tree and wrapping that into curly Q to decorate the top part of our pumpkin. And just wrapping that around the wood stem, having it kind of stick out the side like that. And then I thought a starfish would be a really cute little decoration in here. And I thought you could kind of lay it inside the pumpkin like that. And then I thought, what if I painted it blue to make it look a little bit beachier. So I'm just using that Caribbean blue color and painting that. Those little plastic starfish from the Dollar Tree paint really well. And then I was thinking about it. I thought this would make a perfect candle holder because it's all open, right? Everything's flammable. So I'll have to use a battery operated LED candle from Dollar Tree, but using one of their little candle dishes like that, it would fit perfectly inside. So I just hot glue one of those right in the center of the base. It's going to make it even more interesting, I think. And pop in one of those little battery operated LED candles. I'm still going to use the starfish, but I thought the candle would be a fun touch. So I'm just going to slide my little starfish in there too to decorate it as well. It kind of stays put in there and we have our little wood ring pumpkin. It's very unique. It's kind of an experiment as you can see, but I think it turned out really fun. What do you guys think about my little pumpkin candle holder with a little starfish in there too? And I did that because I was going for a coastal feel, but if you remove that, it's definitely all neutral and a really fun creative little pumpkin DIY. This is how it looks in my cabinet. Now up next we're going to craft with one of these little galvanized leaf signs. Now we can make a really easy little fall sign with it, combining it with one of the long like wood signs from Dollar Tree. This one is actually left over from the 4th of July. They have these it seems like for every season now. It doesn't really matter because I'm not going to use that star cut out anyway. I just wanted something about the size to make a fun little a fall leaf sign like this. And I kind of wanted the same colors as we did our little welcome um, pumpkin that had looked like the faux seagrass on it. So I'm going to just cut this little board down to size long enough for the little leaf to attach on the front. And then I decided that I kind of wanted it to be like a kind of a chunkier sign. So I used that for reference and cut down another piece on that same sign. And we can kind of layer those together to make it a thicker sign like that. Now I do want to still use the existing hanger though. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that back on first. One less thing I'll have to do. And then I thought I wanted a little bit more texture. So I'm actually going to add some burlap to the sign underneath the galvanized metal leaf. 
And I have a roll of it, the six inch roll from Walmart, but you know what? You can get this at Dollar Tree now. I just hot glued mine on. It just happened to be of the perfect size. And then all I have to do is trim down the top and the bottom. And that's just gonna give us another great like neutral color to go with this little fall sign. It's just a very simple little fall sign, but I think it turned out really cute. So to attach the two signs together, we're just gonna use some hot glue. I'm just gonna have the cutout part be on the back. It doesn't really matter. I just kind of wanted a solid surface up here to cover it with the burlap. And now we can just attach the little galvanized metal sign. It's like a oak leaf, I guess. I kind of want it to be a little bit at an angle. And so we're just gonna attach that to the burlap with a little bit of hot glue. Once I got it on there, I thought it looked a little bit plain and it could use maybe a, just a little bit touch. So we're gonna do a couple things to it just to take it up a notch. The first thing I wanna cover are the little hanger hole in it. So I just take some twine, tie a simple bow, and we're just gonna glue that over the top. I always like to do that just because it's easier than trying to fill those kind of holes usually. And a little bow on anything looks cute. Then um, I thought we could kind of draw the little veins on the leaf um, by just using a white paint pen just to give it a little bit more, you know, detail. Easy peasy, kind of basic, but very neutral. And I think it looks great combined with the little welcome pumpkin we did before. And it totally goes with that neutral color scheme. I always enjoy the galvanized metal signs that are seasonal signs from the Dollar Tree, but sometimes it can be a little hard to find ideas to do with them. But this one's great because you can just add a few details like that. And this is how our little leaf sign turned out. Okay, are you guys ready? I have a giant rope pump pumpkin that we're going to make. We're gonna be using the wider white rope from the Dollar Tree, the six foot rope and two of these giant plastic bowls from the Dollar Tree. Now, I don't think the color would really matter on the bowls. I picked white because I thought maybe if it were gonna show, you know, show through the rope, you might be able to see it, but I don't know if you would really matter. So basically I'm gonna st stack one bowl on top of the other. And the tricky part is just attaching them. I thought hot glue would work because it has a rim. Now I really didn't want it to have much of a rim because I thought that would cause problems in the final pumpkin shape, but it's really not that bad in the end. So we're gonna work with what we've got. So I did a bead of hot glue all the way around quickly laying my top bowl right on top, making sure everything's flush here on the sides. If you don't get it your first attempt, you might have to redo it. Now to make it even sturdier, I decided masking tape might help. So I just took some masking tape and I'm going all the way around the two bowls, our giant pumpkin here. And then I'm gonna crisscross and do the other way as well. Cause I wasn't super sturdy and I want this to definitely stay together as one piece in the end. Now it's time to start making this a rope pumpkin. We're gonna start right here on the bottom. I'm purposely leaving a little hole here because I know I'm gonna want to come back with a pumpkin stem. So I'm starting like a circular pattern with that and just hot gluing the Dollar Tree white rope around. Now, this is a giant pumpkin. This is how far one of the six foot goes to kind of give you an idea. You kind of have to start and stop your rope. And if you use a little hot glue there, kind of blend it in, it's not super noticeable where you start and stop, but you don't really have an option if you're using Dollar Tree rope. If you had a longer rope, you could probably do this seamless. And so I went all the way around. We're gonna start a third package here um, on this side of the pumpkin. So make sure you stock up on Dollar Tree white rope and make sure you're all getting the same, uh, you know, size diameter rope if you're going to do this DIY. I'm trying to remember exactly how many packages I used. If I can't figure it out in the video, I'll look it up and try to put that in the description below. But 
as you can see, it's gonna take a lot. So I'm about halfway through the rope pumpkin. Um, I was a little intimidated by this DIY because it was so big, but it turned out so cool. Um, this would be a great indoor or outdoor decoration, I think. It's so large that you could definitely use it outside. So I've got halfway done, so I flipped it over. We're continuing that same rope pattern. It's so easy. You're just hot gluing the rope to the sign. So not much to it. It's just a little bit time consuming just because it's so large. And probably the most time consuming part is like starting and stopping <laughs> your next package of rope, but you are probably going to need a break. And I just keep working on that bottom bowl until we cover the entire thing up. On top, I had left like a little vacant hole for the stem, but on the bottom, I don't do that. So I go all the way to the very bottom and twirl it closed, cutting off the excess rope. And then this is the 11 foot white rope. So this is the skinnier white rope and we're gonna do something a little bit different with this one. We're gonna do like the little pumpkin, um, I guess sections, if you will. So I wanted the skinnier white rope for this and I just start at the top and glued it down. We're gonna go all the way around with this one to the other side. And the reason that I'm doing this is that I don't want it to look like a giant like apple or something like that. I still kind of want it to have some pumpkin segments. And I thought like the rope sections, we can make it look like that. So again, starting at the top where I have the cutout for the stem, I hot glue another rope, but this time at the bottom, I'm gonna have to cut it because I don't want to overlap. I want this to be able to sit level in the final project. So. Wrap that one all the way around to the top. And now I just kind of have one more section here to cordon off. And you can kind of see how that little bump out, you know, does kind of affect my shape a little bit in the final project, but nothing too noticeable. So this is my last rope. Now we have like all six of our little sections of the pumpkin. And I thought a piece of driftwood for the stem would be perfect. So I had a giant piece of driftwood that I found at the beach and I just hot glue that to the top of my pumpkin, trying to let that glue set up so it will kind of stay in place because it was a rather big piece of driftwood. But then again, the pumpkin was really large too. So I kind of let that set up. I do go back with some more hot glue um, to kind of help that and let it dry. Now to decorate the top of the pumpkin, I'm going to use some Dollar Tree burlap. I just kind of had like a six inch, um, ribbon. Dollar Tree now has burlap ribbon, so you can totally use that as well. I didn't want the finished edges on there though. So I cut those off and then I just kind of cut it into a square shape like that. Then I folded it, cut off the corner so I could just wrap that around, kind of make a little collar for the top where I have burlap sticking out the sides and just went over the stem. Then that same Dollar Tree white rope, I just unwind. It's automatically curly, right? So I'm going to use that to make pumpkin tendrils on the top of the burlap. I kind of like it just kind of twisted on top of each other like that. Originally, I was going to tie it on there, but I just want some little curly pumpkin stems coming out. And I think the rope on rope is going to look great, but the burlap kind of breaks it up, kind of makes them look a little bit more noticeable. I wanted a third one, so I attached a third one right there on top, just hot gluing that to the top of our pumpkin. And as you can tell, this is like my whole workbench. Like, this is a big pumpkin. <laughs> Now to decorate it with some seashells. I picked out some Dollar Tree seashells. I chose like different colors just for a little bit of variety. And then I'm just gonna hot glue them to the burlap and to the driftwood pumpkin stem. And then I thought like a Dollar Tree succulent or two would be really cute too. So I'm gonna attach a couple of those up there with the seashells as well. I really want lots of decorations on the top of this cause I don't want it to be plain cause it's so large of a decoration. And then maybe another seashell right over here, a green one would look cute. Don't forget the little pumpkin tendrils made out of rope. 
And I think that looks adorable. One more touch, maybe a little starfish. I get these little starfish on Amazon. I always have those posted in my shop as well. And we're gonna kind of glue that where you can kind of see it standing up into the burlap against the seashell there on the back. And maybe one more seashell. Maybe that should be my motto. Maybe one more seashell. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty good. I'm going to have to make some merch, guys. <laughs> and here it is, our giant rope pumpkin. Definitely took quite a few packages of rope to complete this. And again, I did a coastal inspired decor on the top of mine. You could use more traditional fall on that, but it definitely fits the neutral color scheme being the Dollar Tree white rope. I guess you could also make it with a brown rope as well, but I think it's really fun. Okay, the next DIY, we're gonna be using one of these little hexagon wood signs from the Dollar Tree to make a fall sign. I also designed these two printables that I also printed on cardstock on my printer. Um, and the reason I had to do it on two sheets is because the sign was too big for one sheet of paper. So I'm kind of trying to center my words on there and use an ink pen to kind of draw out where to cut my first sign. I kind of want the farm fresh to be up near the top of the sign. And we're gonna piece this together, even though I'm using like multiple pieces of the cardstock, I kinda want it to look like that slatted board style anyway. So I'm probably gonna add, you know, even more cut cuts to it. So I think we could make that actually work for us. So I want the sign to say Farm Fresh Pumpkins. I designed this with some blue pumpkins as well, um, which is not super neutral, but the rest of it kind of is if you're gonna use this printable. And then we're going to have pumpkins, hayride, cider, and pumpkin pie here at the bottom. And if you're going to do this exact sign from Dollar Tree, again, you're going to want to print that out at 100% with my file in the description below. Um, as you can see, I kind of put a few pencil marks to know how to line the bottom part up here so I could get this right in place. I didn't want any of my like hayride, cider, pumpkin pie getting cut off on the sign. And then I'm just going to cut out the bottom section. Some of you guys have commented like, where are the files? Where are the files? They're always in the, the description below my video. And if you, um, if you don't know how to open the description, just look around. I know like on the computer, I think it's see more that you click to open that up. Um, I'm not sure what it is on the phone. It's something similar. Maybe you have to touch the first line of my description to get the description to open up. But I promise all the links are there. You just have to look in the description. Now I'm going to do the top part of my sign first by putting a, a nice like medium coat of Mod Podge all over and then sticking the Farm Fresh on there with the pumpkins, trying to line up all of my corners the best that I can to cover the entire sign. And we are going to frame our sign out too. Um, I kind of have an interesting take on how we're going to frame this, but it actually turned out really cute. So now it's time to do the bottom section. I just put some Mod Podge over that. Also this area here, and I'm going to overlap. And again, that's going to cause a slight ridge, but we're going to add the lines to this one. So we can kind of make it look like board slats because I want this to look like an old distressed sign. And so um, that's gonna kind of add a thing to it. Once I got it all on there, I dried it and then I went over it with a layer of Mod Podge all over just to seal my um, paper to the sign. Now, I did notice the foam brushes from the Dollar Tree are really leaving like little black particles. Um, so you kind of have to be quick to get them um, while your Mod Podge is wet. I don't know. I never really had that problem before with Dollar Tree foam brushes, but it has been happening a lot to me lately. So I'm just using a baby wipe to kind of clean them up before they get stuck in my glue forever. So I dried it. It looks pretty good. The next step is um, I kind of wanted to stress it. I was kind of seeing how much I need to kind of rub on the paper to distress it, but didn't take too much, you know, because it is paper. 
Um, I'm also going to distress it with paint. So I'm using like an ivory acrylic and my chunky brush and just going horizontally, distressing all over, just kind of aging the sign. And again, if you don't like the distressed look, you could totally leave it all pristine. And then I really want to rough mine up to make it look like old boards um, and not so perfect. So I went over it with my sanding block, sanding it down, trying to cause a little bit of damage. Um, I was able to cause a little bit of damage there on the P with just a baby wipe. So this helped a little bit, but it really wasn't damaging it to the level that I wanted. So I'm going back with like a Cricut weeder from the Dollar Tree and scratching it. It's gonna give that like wood texture that you would see like in a piece of wood. And that worked really well. And then I went back and sanded some more, um, tearing off a little bit of the paper here and there to really make it look weathered. And I just kind of go back and forth with the weeder and sanding until I get like the perfect level of distress that I like. And then I'm gonna distress it one more time with ivory. Because again, I wanted to look kind of old, kind of weathered, very coastal farmhouse. You can always distress more. And if you distress too much, you know, no big deal. As long as you get it while it's still wet, you can just totally wipe it right back off. So I gave it a good dry and then I'm going to use um, my ruler and a cutting blade and we're going to cut the um, wood boards into this one too. So I'm cutting right here on the overlap. That way it's going to kind of make that ridge look intentional. And then I'm going to add another board up here, just trying to make sure that it's even. And then we have kind of the existing line here between the two sheets of paper. Might as well cut it there as well. Just a small detail that you can use to make a Dollar Tree sign look way more high end. Now I told you that my frame was going to be interesting. I'm going to actually going to use chopsticks. Now I have a whole bunch of chopsticks available because I got them on clearance at Target, but I think they might sell them at Dollar Tree too, but you could totally use dowels. I thought chopsticks would be cute because they're a little bit flatter. Um, they're not super round. And so we're going to use one of those for each side of the frame. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tie some twine back on for a hanger before I get too far on the frame. And maybe I couldn't get there anymore. Now, the math on this like scared me. I have some of these like miter scissors that I got on Amazon and I love them. Um, and they work great for cutting dowels or something like um, these chopsticks. But since this wasn't as square, right? I don't need like a 45 degree angle. Um, I needed like a, I kind of measured the angle and it looked like 60 degrees was what I needed on this one. And it kind of hurt my head to have to do some like real world like geometry. Because I want my quarters to be slightly tight, right? So I wanted to miter it since I do have the miter scissors. <laughs> but you don't have to be this extra if you don't want to be. But it did require um, some like late night thinking here to try to figure out how to make this work. <laughs> so 60 degrees and then I want them to lay flat. So I kind of had to be careful like what direction I kind of had them to make sure that my angles were going the right way too. Because I've never done anything besides like a 45 degree angle. I don't know. <laughs> So um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut all six of the chopsticks down to size. Kind of cutting like the little handle part off and then cutting the like tip off too, which basically just leaves me with like flatter dowel. But you know, you could use whatever you wanted. I just wanted something small, something easy to cut um, and something that would be really easy for a DIY. So I thought chopsticks would be fun. Now it's just a matter of attaching all these and seeing how my cutting went. I found that the last one was a slightly too big, but that's no big deal. I can always just trim that one down because I may not have got them all on here perfectly. But what I'm doing is just going around the edges and putting down a bead of hot glue and gluing my little chopstick frame to it. It definitely gave me that like framed out look that I was going for, but again, it was super inexpensive and easy. 
And it's kind of funny that I have chopsticks in my crafting supplies. I do have some in my silver drawer drawer as well, though, because I do like eating like Thai food and stuff like that um, with chopsticks because I always think it's fun. And two more here. They were all going on really, really well until I got to my last one. And I was like, you know, I may not have these all on here perfectly, um, but no big deal. I just cut it down a little bit until it fit. And then I attached that one with hot glue as well. And here it is, our little Farm Fresh pumpkin sign. I think it's so pretty. And I will share this printable if you want to try to recreate. You don't have to do it on this shape of a sign, but I was kind of inspired by one that I had seen at Kirkland's. And so this is how mine turned out. I always love adding a little touch of blue. The rest of it's kind of neutral. And you know, you could kind of make your own as well. You could use this for inspiration, kind of match the sayings and do your own pumpkins on there. Now for the next DIY, um, I'm actually gonna use this great little wagon that I found at the Target dollar spot for $5. I really had to have it cause I thought it was so cute. It would be so cute to decorate for different holidays. I didn't really like the black finish on it though. I'm fine with the galvanized metal. That's totally gonna go with some of the DIYs we're doing today that have the galvanized metal on them, but not a big fan of the black. So the first thing I do is distress all of the black on it with ivory, kind of brighten that up a little bit. So I just fill it in with some floral moss there from Dollar Tree kind of the brownish kind. And then for a more neutral color, I thought we could fill it up with some ivory pumpkins. These are from the Dollar Tree. Um, these are the ones on the wire. I don't really need them to be on the wire though. So I'm just gonna pull those off and load up our little wheelbarrow. Um, you have to be kind of careful though um, that you don't take all the paint off these. I was trying to figure out a strategy that would be the best way to remove them. And then I decided that just cutting them um, with my floral scissors from Dollar Tree um, is a way better way to do that because then you don't tear any of the paint off the bottom. So just trying to do enough to fill it all the way up. So I used several packages of the little ivory pumpkins. Then I decided I wanted to decorate the wagon after I get it all put together, of course. And I'm going to do that with some of these little rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. They have this great like blue and orange um, pumpkins. And so I just picked one that I thought would look good on there. Just cut that down to size. And then just using my scraper, I'm going to scrape that little rub-on transfer on there. And this is a great way to decorate galvanized metal. Um, I think it looks better than trying to paint it and stuff like that. You really get a cool finish. Um, anytime you're putting those down, if you don't get it all down, just lay it back down, scrape again. You should be able to transfer your whole image. So just going to load my pumpkins back in here. And then of course, then I was like, you know what? I kind of want my little wagon wheels to look like wood. And I kind of forgot that step. So I go back and just distress those with some antique wax by Waverly and like a little chippy brush from Dollar Tree. And it kind of made that look like wood instead of those black wheels that were before. And this is how it turned out. I think it's very neutral, very cute. Items from the Dollar Tree and the Target Dollar Spot on this one. And I haven't been as happy with the selection at Target Dollar Spot. Maybe I need to go check it out again. But when I was in there the other day, they had nothing but like plastic. <laughs> I love the metal pieces like this that they have. Hey guys, if you visited my new website yet, it is craftybeach.net. It's my new blog I'm using to archive all of the YouTube DIYs I do for you guys. So if you visit, you're going to find a collection of blog posts. Um, trying to get caught up. I'm getting there, I promise. I try to do one or two a day. But if you click on one of the blog posts, it's going to take you to every photo 
for every DIY I made in that YouTube video that you can pin on Pinterest really easily so that you can remember to go back and make it. They have little Pinterest buttons. If you scroll down, you can find the corresponding YouTube video for directions on how I made it. I'm having everything organized by seasons. I started it this spring, so I'm getting quite a few categories on my blog. And then I have helpful links like my Amazon shop for the crafting supplies I use that are not from Dollar Tree, that are from Amazon. So that is my Amazon shop where I do earn commission and I even have a link to my Etsy store if you want to grab some of those fun crafting memes that I post. So be sure to check it out. Really excited about this new website. It is called Crafty Beach, all one word, dot net. We're gonna use one of these big pumpkin wreath forms from the Dollar Tree, and we're gonna do a wood bead pumpkin on this. So what I'm doing is just using some wire cutters. Um, it's really not too hard to disconnect this, but just disconnecting each one of the wires from the top of the pumpkin. Now I wanna do all of those sections with wood beads, but I also want to decorate the border of the pumpkin and the pumpkin stem with Dollar Tree rope. So this is the thinner brown rope from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna start here in the center under the stem and just kind of fold that around there and glue that down to get us started. And then I want to wrap around the existing pumpkin stem and just wrap it with rope. You could also do this with like twine but I think rope is a little bit less wrapping, but again, you kind of have to pull the whole rope through. So <laughs> I really don't know which way is easier. You could also just glue some of the wider brown rope to the front of it, but I really wanted this to be a high quality piece. So I just start wrapping away until I use my entire first piece of rope. Now, one thing I did learn on this DIY was not to remove the tape from the bottom one when you're wrapping something like that because it gets all frayed like that. So that's how far one package of rope took me pretty much half of the pumpkin. And then I'm just gonna start another piece right next to it here at the bottom, gluing it. And I have this so sped up, I'm sorry, but you know, it's kind of time consuming and I don't wanna waste your whole day. So I just wrapped this all the way around And two packages of rope wraps the entire outer edge of the pumpkin. And I think it turned out really great. Once I get it all on there, I'm just using a lighter to go around and burn off any of the fuzzies and just clean this up. This is a really large pumpkin DIY. You can use this for a wreath for your front door for fall. Um, I used mine just as a wall hanging and I just love how it turned out. Now I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree wood beads. The only ones I had were these str strings of ones that I got at the Dollar Tree, but now they have them loose in the bag. So that's what you need is just loose wood beads. I'm just leaving them natural wood again. I like that look and they're kind of small, these that I was using, but I just go ahead and fill up the entire like middle section of the pumpkin with the wood beads. Now it's just a matter of securing that to the top of the pumpkin now. So it's kind of hard to see exactly where it was. You might have to kind of guess here. What I did was I just used some Dollar Tree twine and I tied off the end of the wire that I had the wood beads on. So the wood beads will kind of stay in place and I kind of have something now that I can work with. And so I cut off a little piece of twine that's you know attached to that. And then I am going to use that twine to tie this to the pumpkin reef structure. So I kind of poke it down inside the rope and then I just wrap that around. The twine, you know, blends in perfect, perfectly with the brown rope from the Dollar Tree. And I just wrap that around both sides until it is secure and then just hot glue that down. And I think that is going to be a sturdy way to attach those. But now it's just a matter of using wood beads on all of the other ones. So I just start stringing. This is something fun to do if you're um, listening to a TV show or watching a show. Something fun to do with your hands. So again, I just fill it all up with rope, tie it off with some Dollar Tree twine, use that piece to attach it. This one I decided to add a little dot of hot glue first. I put the wire on there 
wrapping around the twine in the rope. So I'm just gonna speed this way up. I do the same thing here for all six of the um, little sections of the pumpkin. And I think this turned out really sweet. It was really fun DIY to make. I've also used this pumpkin wreath form to make like a giant like 3D macrame pumpkin centerpiece where you use two of them back to back. And I used the Dollar Tree white rope for that one. It turned out so cute. I love these pumpkin wreath forms. Now it's time to make a simple little bow. I'm just going to use some Dollar Tree like burlap ribbon just because I think it looks kind of coastal. And we're just going to make a simple bow. I kind of want to do two colors. So I also have like that mint green color too. And I'm just kind of working with what I had. Um, I am, I pinched it with a tail and made a, a like a loop on both sides with my bow. But I also want to add some blue to that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it like a two colored bow. So I'm just gonna add the tail and loop this pinching in the middle. The great thing about this ribbon is that you don't have to twist or anything for a bow like this. Um, you just kind of have to gather it in the middle. And I had enough of that to make two loops of the bluish green color. And then I just use a zip tie to secure it they are wired, so all I have to do is poof that up and you have a very easy bows. I know bows can be a little bit intimidating. And then I'm just gonna dovetail the tails that I've brought down both on the same side and cut off the zip tie. Now I'm gonna attach that to the front of our little pumpkin here, tying that off with some twine right there at the base of the pumpkin stem. I kind of like it with the bow. See how I kind of did the tails a little bit inside of it um, so they don't stick out so far, but it needed a pumpkin leaf. So I decided to use a seashell, a little orange seashell um, from the Dollar Tree, hot gluing that to the top for a little coastal decoration to the top of our little wood bead pumpkin. And it's kind of upside down right now, but one reason I kind of pulled the bow down a little bit too is that you could still see the pumpkin stem because I wanted you to be able to tell what it is supposed to be. And I used this in my entryway. I thought it turned out really cute. And here it is, our little would-be pumpkin. I wrapped the whole um, structure of it with Dollar Tree brown rope, filled it all in with Dollar Tree wood beads and added a little seashell and bow as well. And I was making this to go with my coastal decor, so you wouldn't have to add a colored bow like that if you just did plain burlap or more neutral color. It would be completely neutral for your fall DIY. And next DIY, I wanted to show you another like fall sign DIY using a wood leaf sign from the Dollar Tree, this time a slatted one. And I just needed a rectangular sign. I had this sign from the Dollar Tree. Um, it did have a bump out on there. Of another little sign. So I'm just trying to clean that up a little bit. I like to layer my Dollar Tree signs if I can. The paper on this one was kind of loose. I thought I could just peel it off, but no go. So we'll just make that the back, covering that with some contact paper. And again, sanding off the edges. Whenever you do a finish back on a Dollar Tree DIY, it's gonna make it look way better. Just if you keep the piece yourself, if you give it to a friend, um, just makes it look a little bit more finished, makes me happier. Now this little slatted um, leaf kind of has a different feel than the first one. I'm using Antique Wax by Waverly just on that back raw um, wood. It's not really wood, I guess, um, whatever that they call that. Um, on the back of the sign to give it kind of a little bit of a wood grain. And then I go over the top of that with some ivory paint, distressing it and wiping it all down with a baby wipe to kind of give me a faux wood grain. And I went back in there with a little bit more Antique Wax by Waverly. And see that like faux wood grain, that's totally not real wood. That's what we're trying to create with this. Now it is time to decorate the leaf. I just go in and fill in the hanger holes to fill that in with a little bit of spackle before I go in with some paint. I am doing a coat of ivory paint all over this little leaf. I think I kind of like the slatted ones better. 
Um, but if you're putting the fabric and stuff on them, like we did with the other leaf, I guess the solid ones would probably be better. Kind of go in all the different slatted areas to kind of paint that little back brace the ivory as well. And then I'm going to distress it with some antique wax by Waverly to give me that coastal farmhouse vibe. Make it look a little bit weathered, blending that in and spreading it kind of out there with a baby wipe to make it look nice and weathered. If you get it too dark, you can go back in with your original ivory color to brighten it up. But don't be afraid to distress because I distress everything if you like that look. Now, I love the contrast of the ivory against the wood. And on this one's rectangular sign, so I do have a little bit of room for a word as well. So again, I went to my Cricut and cut down some words for a little cute little fall sign. I had a fun idea with the leaf theme. I would do a little stencil that says fall in love. So a little fall sign, a little play on words. And then I'm going to combine that with the... Um, little um, leaf that's going to be falling. And I think that looks really cute. And it's going to look like a nice wood sign with like hand painted finish. I'm going to use my paper transfer paper to put down my little stencil. And again, I don't know if I saved this, but if I didn't, I'll try to um, include the font in the description below. If you want to recreate, I'm going to add this to the top of my sign. Trying to make sure that I get in my stencil on there centered. And apply my stencil vinyl straight to my sign. I always like to use some painter's tape all around the edges to make sure I don't go crazy when I go to hand paint this. But I love making stencils. They're so fun to personalize your own sign. Add any word you want. So again, I'm using ivory chalk paint and a little stencil dauber from Dollar Tree to paint that in. And I like the stencil daubers because you kind of just go up and down with that. You're going to have a lot less bleeding. But again, with coastal farmhouse decor, if you do get a little bit of bleeding, it's going to be fine. It's just going to make it look a little bit distressed, right? So just weeding out my final little stencil piece, pieces of my vinyl there. And that looks great with my little ivory leaf that we are going to attach. I want to do it like upside down and like to a side to make it look like the little leaf is falling. And I'm just going to use a little frame on the back um, to glue mine down. And I use a combination of wood glue and hot glue, but a hot glue would probably be plenty. I'm trying to remember which way I wanted it. I think I wanted it this way. Really a sweet little neutral fall sign. And a little bit of coastal touches with the colors like that I use, like the ivory and the woods. And um, we'll add a little bit of blue here to it too. I am just going to use the hanger that came with it, attach that to the top. And this is my touch of blue, the little blue leaves from the Dollar Tree. I just took two of those. And I actually strung those on my hanger so I could kind of put those over on the side of my sign. And I ended up attaching them with hot glue so they didn't really go anywhere. I just kind of want them to kind of be over on the side of the sign just to provide like a little decorative touch over there. And this is how it turned out. Our little fall in love sign. So easy to make with just a couple of signs from the Dollar Tree and a few blue leaves there just for fun. But if you wanted just the straight neutral um, fall look, you could just add some of their tannish leaves that they have or even some of the ivory ones would look really cute as well. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to make a wood bead pumpkin and I wanted a really large, strong one. And so and I, I asked my husband for some leftover wire. He's an electrician and he actually had leftover wire. So that's where I got this heavy gauge wire. That's probably why it's all kind of like crazy as well, um, because it was just scraps. <laughs> but what I did was just crisscross two of the wires, pulling them together. Then I'm coming in with a third piece, 
crisscrossing that one in there too, overlapping. It's such a thick wire that I'm using here that I had to kind of use tools to be able to bend it because it was a little hard to bend with my fingers. But what I want to do is make an eight sided wood bead pumpkin candle holder. So I've done a smaller version of this in one of my other videos um, that I just used some of the thinner wire from the Dollar Tree, the thin floral wire, and actually put that through like strung wood beads already. But this one I wanted to make larger. I wanted to make it big enough that I could put a candle in there. That one was a six sided one and this one's gonna be an eight, one, an eight sided one. So I strung those all together, but I also am tying it off with some twine um, down here at the bottom. I want them to be all secure together. This is gonna be the very bottom of my eight sided pumpkin. And then using just the natural wood beads from the Dollar Tree, I'm gonna string all eight of the sides with the wood beads leaving um, like probably three, two to three inches at the top um, to make a pumpkin stem. So this is kind of similar how we did like the wood beads on that giant um, pumpkin wreath form, um, just stringing them straight on wire. And sometimes Dollar Tree does have the thicker wire. I do find it's hard to find sometimes though. And it's usually like a bright color like purple. Once I got all the wood beads strung on there, I decided I probably should count them um, to make sure that they're even and then just start pulling them all towards the center to form the shape of a pumpkin. It was a little unruly, but we're going to get there. <laughs> so I do like opposite sides and twist those together. And then bring in another side, twist that around and bring in the side opposite it, twist it around and keep doing that until I get all eight sides kind of tied off on top. Be careful not to poke yourself if you're working with wire like this. And it's going to be kind of a crazy hot mess at the top, but that's okay. We can just make that into a pumpkin stem. I just use some pliers to kind of... Um, you know, kind of cinch it all up together. And then I just start spacing out the different sections of the eight sided would be pumpkin, kind of spreading them all out evenly. And that wire was definitely strong. It definitely kept the shape that I was looking for, for the would be. And then I'm going to go in with some twine. I think this is the thicker twine from Walmart. And I am just wrapping around all that wire, securing it all in there making it nice and safe and kind of making it all disappear, just winding it up. And it also gives me a pumpkin stem. So I just use a little hot glue up here at the top just to finish that off and cover all the mess. Now, if you had new wire, it might not be um, quite as messy as that one was, but in the end, it actually did a really good job. It was a nice, strong wire. I'm just burning off any of the fuzzies on there on my little pumpkin stem. And look how cute it looks. Now I thought it would be really fun to put a candle in it. And I'm just going to use one of these little mint green jar candles from the Dollar Tree. I don't know if you could actually light that or not. Probably not with all the twine above it. But I think it looks super cute for a coastal fall decor. I thought a Dollar Tree starfish would be the perfect final touch here. I just hot glue that to the pumpkin stem up here at the top in the combination of like the natural wood beads, the light blue candle, the twine and the starfish. I think it looks very coastal. I know it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but here it is our little wood bead pumpkin. I think it turned out really fun. Now I did the coastal influences by adding the starfish and the blue candle inside, but if you left it just the plain wood beads like that with the burlap on top, it's going to totally be neutral for your fall decor. And they're really fun to make. You can see it there next to the other one that we made in our last video. Now it's time for the final reveal. I hope you enjoyed all 20 of these neutral fall DIYs. Be sure to leave your favorite in the comments below. I love reading your comments and it definitely helps my channel be better to find out what you guys enjoy. Enjoy the final review.
Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant ember I was a little child Every year for as long as I remember All the leaves were on and wild Going all the way until November Turn the Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant So
Since I was a little child Every year for as long as I remember All the leaves were running wild Going all the way until November Turn the world around us into gold When the autumn leaves are playing chases Puts a smile up on my face They leave their branches one by one And whirl around there just for fun Some are faster, some are slow And some are high and some... Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of today's crafting marathon. And I also want to give a huge thank you to all my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting my channel here on YouTube. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Janae Farrington, Julie Miller, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C., Live Another Day, Tracy Wooldridge, Marin Christensen, Debbie Middleton, Vicki Connors, Adrian Brolt, Deborah Caldwell and Red Mama. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. If you would like to become a member, all you have to do is hit the join button next to today's video. It's $4.99 a month. You're free to cancel anytime and you're going to get early ad-free access to my content here on YouTube. And you'll also get a shout out in each video. Okay, would you like even more fall DIYs? Check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, Happy crafting.